and welcome. This is Mathuri Verma. Every Saturday I publish ideas on how to be a pro at work and in life. If you're looking to get better at something by even 1%, my videos are for you. So please subscribe right now for new content every week. I'm an ISB alumna and a part-time freelancer who teaches verbal to GMAT aspirants. In the past few weeks, a lot of my students have reached out with doubts and queries on whether they should apply for round 3 and 4 for MBA in the US, especially given the current situation. If you are one such individual, today I am going to talk about 5 factors that you need to consider before you go on to apply for rounds 3 and 4 for MBA in the US. The first factor is GMAT. Many of the Ivy League colleges have waived the GMAT for their final application rounds. They have even extended their deadlines to support the applicants in the current situation to be able to make the timeline for their applications. So if you have already given the GMAT and scored well, great. But if you haven't, this might look like good news to you. But think again, is it really good news? GMAT score is a major factor of your application. Now that it is waived off, the number of applications are going to rise. While the colleges will fare well because Let's face it, application fees are a huge area of revenue for these colleges. But for you, it might mean increased competition. Because with the GMAT waived, a lot of students are going to apply. So the differentiating factor will now be only your profile and your essays, which is my second factor. Colleges will only have limited seats. A few articles are also claiming that the intake of foreign students might be limited given the current situation, which means even more increased competition. The high number of applications will now be competing for a limited number of seats. So your overall profile and your essays will be a differentiating factor and will play the most important role in determining whether you get that admit. So if you really feel that your profile and your essays are going to be unique and they're going to stand out, go ahead, do apply. But if you have even a tiny bit of doubt, Think about how you might want to play that card on your profile and on your essays to be able to make that impact on the admissions committee. The third factor to consider is your travel timeline. Let's say all goes well and you get an admit. Think about getting started with college. Given the current pandemic situation, a lot of colleges are thinking of delaying their semesters and the travel situation might also be a little bit dicey given the USCIS offices are closed. So getting your student visa might be a little difficult and tricky. What you can do is reach out to the admissions committee, drop them an email, try to understand what kind of a situation they are in and how they are looking at starting with the semesters and see whether you are comfortable with the whole timeline. Because that might mean delayed travel for you. The fourth thing to consider is the course structure. When you talk to the admissions team, also ask about how they plan on conducting the courses because a lot of colleges are considering a hybrid structure which means that they will start out with a few courses online and then later when the situation improves a little bit, they might look at starting courses and taking classes on campus. This might mean reduced opportunities for you to learn and collaborate with the diverse cohort in person. It's necessary to consider how important this factor is to you and whether you're okay with the whole setup and the hybrid model. The fifth and the most important thing to consider are your internships and jobs. Right after you start college, you'll have to start preparing for your internship if you are in a two-year course or your post-MBA job if you are in a one-year course. With the courses being hybrid, the travel being delayed and the economy being impacted, companies might seem reluctant in hiring individuals. There is also some noise about the Trump administration removing the OPT benefit which allows STEM students, the ones in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, to work in the US for up to three years after graduation. Now all of this put together might seem the worst scenario outcome but it might all turn out well in your favor as well. All I'm trying to do is giving out factors to you that you want to consider that might have an implication on your education journey and your post-education profession. A good way to go about the whole situation would be to reach out to the current class or the recently graduated alumni to more clearly understand the situation on the ground. Reach out to specific individuals on LinkedIn if you do not know anybody in those schools right now. And if you're wondering how to figure out uh, who you might want to reach out to, my video on building uh, LinkedIn connections can help you understand how to find out specific people on LinkedIn. The link is in the description box below. If you're looking for further guidance or have any other queries, you can drop me an email at the address mentioned in the description box. But for now, if you found my views helpful, please share it with other students whom you think might benefit from this. And don't forget to click on the like and the subscribe button. 
I am Madhuri Verma wishing you all the very best for your MBA applications. Thank you for watching.